Hey everybody, um, welcome back. Um, this is a video that's been sort of long overdue. I've been working on this thing for, oh man, <laughs> four and five months off and on. Uh, it's taken a really long time. I've gone through quite a few different design concepts to get to it, but um, I am happy to say that this thing is finally complete. I wish that I could have done the landscaping and whatnot, but I, I'm just not good enough with that stuff yet, so... You know, maybe maybe one day I'll I'll add to it all. But anyway, this is the whole putting the template stuff together. So this is the basic three sixteenth inch foam core. So with um, all of the windows and doors and whatnot, I wanted to make them all wood so that way I can stain them. So in this case, I cut out the stuff out of three uh, the the foam core and then just put uh, a bigger. Um, piece of foam core on the back side on you know on the inside of it so that way it would be support so I can just sort of glue the wood in there um you know just tacky glue that kind of thing um piece by piece I put this together um you know with the frame and all the little odds and ends and then eventually the door paneling itself see there's the that's kind of what it looks like with the frame there so um, that's about, let's see, it was that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it's about seven, eight pieces, I think, of wood, just for that one door before the paneling goes on. So yeah, it, it, each one of these things took me, I don't know, probably, probably an hour to do, and I'm still not that good with it, um, you know, I really like the... I, I like the way it looked for the most part, but um, honestly, uh, it, it still doesn't have that realistic look for me just yet. But uh, there's the panel, because I, I just, you know, it's balsa wood, so I just couldn't do that angle on it to make it look like it's really uh, inset correctly. But I think it, you know, I think it looks pretty good overall. Now, the front door's a little different. Front door I had to, um, I'm sorry, I think my audio just... Um, peaked on me there but um the front door is a little different because i used this um plastistruct i think it's what it's called i'll i'll show it here in a second but you know it's the for the top half of the door is is a window so for that one instead of doing the whole piece of foam i ended up just doing a half piece of foam so that way you know you'd be able to look through the window but the interior is where I had the big problems. I painted it all, and to be honest with you, when it all gets closed up, I don't, I don't even know if it's really necessary to paint it black. But I was gonna put lights in there, but I kind of couldn't figure it out. I, just, I don't know if you can see it from the windows there, but I put this like little paper curtain kind of thing going on, and and by the time the windows went in, you couldn't even see it. So it was a complete waste of time. So okay, there's the plastistruct. Um, there's the door. Um, I th I think I've already put it in there. Maybe I haven't. Maybe it's everything but the the plastistruct little piece of paper. But the um, I you know I got this at the hobby store. I think it's like it's super thin, and then you might not be able to. I can't read it right here from at the moment. But it's um it's super thin and it's pretty flexible, and it actually is it's it's pretty clear for the most part. So it ended up you know. <laughs> used maybe a, a couple of inches in, even with all the windows so there's me gluing it in as I say um, mm, I don't know you might be able to do the, the painting the stuff on the interior in black it, it may not be worth it I don't know um, you know the um, at the end of the day I guess it's probably better to go ahead and paint it black so then that way you know, you don't have that white foam core <laughs> from the inside. See, if you and you can't look through it because I had these walls of the interior printed on them, and you just couldn't see it. I don't, it was a complete waste of time. Three or four different tries, and it, it was worthless. So this is the windows. These are all the windows. I uh, I had this idea of doing all these double hung windows, uh, potentially having the ability to slide back and forth. Um, those were pipe dreams. <laughs> I, I just, um, I just didn't have the ability to figure out how to do that correctly. But, um, so I ended up sticking with this concept here. Um, 
the um I, I sort of I, I glued this stuff together. Um at first I actually started gluing them together um with just the pieces of wood, you know, just by themselves, and then eventually I just started cutting out the um the little piece of plastic and then gluing them to the plastic and then trimming the plastic to the window. I don't know which one was the best way of doing it. You might just have to sort of decide that for yourself. This is the front window. Um, I think there's 10, 10 or 12 different pieces there. Um, it is not the same way as the, um, um, the, from the game. I had to make some alterations because I just didn't have the ability to do some of the detail work. Uh, there's those another set of those curtains that I'm fascinated by <laughs> that I did. I like the way they turned out, but um, completely useless effect when I was done with the whole thing. So I'm just going to, I don't know, just constantly wave my hand behind it for <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> I have no idea why. But um, I'm going to fix... Uh, there I go again. Look at me. I'm just like, ooh, ghost in the background. I, I have no idea. Sometimes... I record audio for these things, and half the time I don't go back and listen to it before I do the voiceover, and I really should, because um, I say the craziest things and I get stuck on these these useless facts. <laughs> um, it's probably gonna be a while before I do anything live because of that, but um, but anyway, I'm gonna fix some of the design work on um, when I put it on the templates. So this way, it's not gonna be as long of a window. Because it kind of threw it out of proportion just a little bit for my taste, at least based on the original reference. Now, if you notice all those cre uh, those creases in the foam, that was because I used, uh, for whatever reason, I used really cheap foam core. And the stuff, you know, because the paper stayed on it front and back, um, I ended up actually, you know, it, it, it bowed on me. So I had to bend it back just to... I figured hopefully that it was going to be covered by the, um, you know, it was going to be covered up by the wooden paneling, but um, it still ended up curling the thing a little bit more than what I wanted. So that was a problem. Um, I'm fast forwarding through all this here, so that way you can kind of see all the little pieces and all the little steps for one window. And um, these were just a little bit light. And then after these things dried, I ended up trimming them down a little bit more to make them look a bit more even um, with my hobby knife. But you can tell that they're still a little out of proportion. So most of this was... Uh, see, there's the window that you can see. you see them closer as, as, uh, as further in the video. But, um, you know, I, I didn't do anything special. I just glued them in. That's why I didn't... I think I, I don't show it. You know, because it's just gluing them in place. Not big, not a big deal. Um, most of the um, the um, the supports here, I had to sort of figure out as I was doing it, which is why I didn't I didn't pre-cut them. I just wanted to make sure that they were right after I had gotten all this framework in place. Um, some of the stuff as I was working on it. Normally, I, I do templates first, and um, I, because I had gone through so many different designs, um, I ended up sort of doing the base and then figuring out as I was going. Those those holes, as you can see, the little square holes, that was because at one point I had this brilliant idea I was going to do the interior and the exterior. Um, in a different model, I actually did do the interior, but you couldn't see it. <laughs> it was too small. Um, you had to put your eyeball way up on the, uh, the window just to be able to see anything, and it just wasn't worth it, unfortunately. Uh, I guess it was just a little too small a scale and, and a little too rustic. Everything looked like it was um, well, a little motor in the background there, compressor. Um, it looked like it was just, um, I don't know, it, it, it wasn't worth it. <laughs> so these little strips here for the for the siding, I've, I've used multiple times. It's actually base wood. Um, and it's one thirty-second inch thick. I think it's three sixteenths um, wide, and that's pretty much the one forty-eight scale size for the piece of wood siding. The way that goes. So 
um, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty, pretty close to real scale for the most part. Um, I order these things online, order them in a big batch. If you're going to do something like this, this whole, um, house general store thing, it, it took about 70 or 80 strips of wood, you know, no exaggeration, um, just to get it done. So you're noticing that, um, I'm kind of doing this the old method. I have a new method. So I, you know, where I am, the old method is me measuring them, making sure they're right size, and then putting a bunch of glue down and then doing this, right? Um, I have a new method and for whatever reason, yeah. So you got to eyeball this when you're doing this stuff. Um, you just want to make sure that it fits. So that way, by the time you get to the top, it will, um, it'll match, <laughs> but, uh, so this, this is taking a long time, but I'm also getting my bearings trying to figure out what I'm doing, you know, cause sometimes I have to just sit and make sure this method's going to work before I, I kind of get too deep into it and I don't have any way around it. Now that little cutout there for that door that I'm using with my finger there, um, that was actually because I, you know, was doing the interior and I was going to light it up and I was going to use it as the light box, but I didn't do it. But I'll leave it on the template just in case anybody wants to do an interior, but um, I just ended up covering it over with siding. So the, here is the, the new siding method. What I decided to do was, um, see there's the warping there is making my measurements kind of a little off a little bit you know here a 32nd here 64th there kind of thing but just enough to to kind of bend them in place you know to kind of push them in place a little bit um but this is the same stuff but i found some plastic foam board it's it's not plastic cover it's it's some sort of like polyvinyl kind of foam based thing i don't know i was at the I was at the, um, the art store trying to figure out some new materials to work with and I found this stuff and ultimately um, what I found it's kind of useless for what I wanted <laughs> to do but if I just uh, pour a bunch of glue on it um, because it doesn't it's plastic it doesn't actually soak up so it takes longer for it to dry so I just kind of got a, um, a palette knife there and then kind of spread out the glue you know, I'm the, the it's really white. You can't really see it, but there's glue on there, and I I'm, I spread it out really thin, and I just kind of make sure it doesn't go too far, and I put it down, tap it down just a little bit to get the thing, and then I take my tweezers, and carefully pull it up, wipe off the excess to the sides, and now I have glue, a little bit a thin layer of glue over the whole strip, um, relatively even for the most part. And uh, I can put it on there. I don't have a whole lot of um, glue that pushes out the sides because there's not that much on it. And it dries better and faster. And um, and for the most part, it actually keeps the glue off of the front. Every once in a while, you get your fingers get a little uh, wet with glue. But for the most part, it... Um, it is the method that I did for everything, and it made it everything so much faster. So I was really happy I sort of came up with this. But um, if you don't have that, I'm, I'm sure a, like a glass plate would work. Uh, probably even better. Like a piece of hobby glass or something like that. And then you can just peel off the glue after it dries. All right. So here is um, mistake number one. So I have all the siding up. Now, obviously, if you notice, if you're really um, fans of this model from Red Dead, you're going to notice that there's a that piece missing off the back, that sort of shed that's you know that's off the back of this thing. And, and as I say, at the time, at, at this moment, I am still debating that I'm going to put lighting in it, and uh, that's why I don't have the roof on it. And you know this idea of using that as a flip top where you can turn off the lights. Problem is, um, I wasn't really comfortable enough to just to figure out how to do the lights. And at this point, after going through everything I've gone through with this model, 
I just couldn't, you know, I couldn't justify the extra time it was going to take to do it. So, um, my mistake here, though, was staining this right now. I was too, I wasn't finished with the build, and I should not have stained it. But I knew I had to stain the front and get the rest of the front done before I could put the porch on, because I wouldn't have an ability to get to the porch anymore. So... Um, I knew that, um, this isn't paint by the way, this is like a thinned out paint that I mixed up, um, just to kind of get it closely to match. But anyway, uh, the stain, I didn't make enough of it. And by the time that I got to the last piece, I had to remix the stain and I thought I got it matched, but once it dried, that base would, you know, cause I had to, you know, get a different batch and it was from a different tree and it didn't stain the same way and it was much darker and I, to this to this day I have not been able to to get it to match at all even with paint uh, it was very upsetting I don't you know the only way to fix it is to rip off all of the siding you know to rip off the piece and then redo the whole thing I think I'm just gonna mark it up to do not stain until all the rest of the wood is is there so I should not have done that until that step. Um, usually I make so much stain, you know, that it's just that I have, I, I waste so much of it. So I've been trying to not make as much for, for each step, you know, for, um, for each model when I'm doing it. Uh, and in this case, unfortunately, I just, um, didn't make enough and, and, <laughs> and I, I suffered for it too. Um, so this isn't really all that exciting. This is just sort of painting all the white parts. Um, and this is, um, mistake number two, because the white edges there, um, in the game, it is only a white edge on the front, not the side. So, um, step, you know, tip two here, I guess, is to, um, keep the reference in front of you. <laughs> because if you don't, it's, uh, you're, you're going to mess up. And if you're trying to make it look like something, you know, you gotta, you gotta keep the reference in front of you. In this case, the reference was behind me on my computer, and the computer was off. <laughs> so, that was bad. So, what I'm doing here is, um, I am building up the, um, the, uh, um, the foam it itself, uh, the, the wall, because there is that extended piece. Now, the reason I'm doing it sort of this way as opposed to the template will have the full size, but... I had to do it this way because um, it, it it didn't it didn't look tall enough after I started to put it all together. It looked like it was a little short. I don't know if that was because it made the windows a little too large, you know, in the front there. But whatever it is, it, it just didn't feel like it was tall enough. So I needed to add just a little bit of height. I think it's like a half an inch, maybe. And see, there's the top that I put on there, and I'm using the pins to to sort of keep it in place because at this point it's it's teetering so I had to make sure that the glue had something to you know to stick to and dry but um there's me looking over my glasses mm, great <laughs> but um so yeah I mean it it, it it worked out I would have liked to have had it part of the original piece but it also made me make sure that I didn't um you know that I didn't actually build up the wood too high but, you know, so you just need to make sure that you, you know, because not everything goes up to the very, very top. So you have to make sure that um, you're able to get all those pieces correctly, you know, and um, and flatten out those two boards or whatever to make it look like it's there. Or, you know, you can make your own design and, and go with it how you want to. But so that, that's it. And so, see, there's there was me. I had to I had to go back with paint and actually sort of do a. a a rough match on the whole thing so to make the sides look like uh, I think I actually did a pretty good job for the most part because from, from this angle it looks like it's stained but that's actually paint <laughs> um, okay so this is a Prismacolor um, acrylic pencil I've tried four or five different brands and this is the only pencil that would write on like stained wood and, you know, and by the way, this is a matte wood. It's not glossy at all. It's it's flat. So, but this is the only one that would actually write on it. So I wrote, 
you know, I just had a template and, um, you know, a reference, I should say. And then the tape is just to mark off the area so I don't sort of go outside the, the guidelines, as it were. But I ended up just doing this um, first part here with the pencil. And then I went back with some white paint and a very, very, very tiny brush and then touched up um, the best that I could. But I figured, you know, a rough hand, you know, just, you know, freehanding it. It kind of gave it that old sort of rustic look a little bit, and I was fine with it. It's not like they were going to, in the old school, they were going to put templates up on the on the wall or whatever. They just did it by hand. Um, this is all of the wood that I had to cut for the porch. And because the wood that I had was balsa, um, when I was cutting out the notches so it would sit on the um, the, um, the support... Um, it kept splitting. <laughs> so it was, as a, that, that blue tape on there is just a, because I had to re-glue the wood so that way it would fit. So, okay, here's um, here's um, mistake number three. I, I, are, are we up to three, <laughs> four? I don't know. Um, but here's another mistake. And the mistake was I cut the foam for the base um, for the porch. And for whatever particular reason, I thought it was going to be easier to just do the um, front of the porch first and then do the walk around, you know, the wrap around walkway and separately. Um, it proved to be a waste of time. And in the template, I will have the two layers because it's just the half inch foam, you know, half inch uh, XPS foam. Um, and I'll just have the two layer templates that you can cut out and you just glue together. And then that way you don't have to worry about all that silly angles and stuff and extras that I added on later. So um, this is not this is not another mistake completely. <laughs> I, I don't, sometimes I wonder. It's like why am I making these videos? I, I I guess it's mostly for me to learn how to do some of this stuff because I keep messing up. But anyway, I, I had to hot glue the um, because I was impatient. So I hot glued that um, piece of wood. Uh, the base wood, like I think it's some like three six inch, three sixteenths inch base wood, I think is what it is up there. So these are sticks that, um, excuse me, I hit the microphone. These are just sticks that I got from the trees outside. Uh, I wanted something that had, um, I don't know what kind of tree it, bush it was, but um, it had some, you know, roughness to it, which is. You know, as close as I can get to what the um, the the model in the game was, but um, the big problem here is that um, you know I thought I had a preset hole for foam, but it's kind of it's not like like countersinking wood. You know, it, it's 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 it goes down a little further than it should, or it it leans and it does a bunch of other stuff. So I think the I think the best thing to do would be to cut a piece of foam on the front and you know, like like in between those that's the actual height of the where you need it to be so this way the top part can sit on it perfectly and then you can hot glue those things to that piece see that there it is i did this with no support and it took me forever to get all that stuff right and i had to end up gluing a little bit more down to extra add to the support so don't do that do it a much easier way build supports to hold the stuff up and then you know where you can pull out the support later um so in this case um i'm using hot glue because uh, it, i think i'm using hot no yeah i think i'm using hot glue just a thin layer of hot glue and then i go back and reinforce it with tacky glue but this is the um because i just i, just, I, I was getting impatient <laughs> i needed to hurry up and get it built so there's the there is the porch overhang and whatnot. So at this point, um, even though that you are not going to see underneath of it, unless you really essentially turn it upside down, and even then you can't see a, a whole lot, but I decided that, I, you know, just in case somebody was ever going to turn it upside down, <laughs> or I was, I needed to be able to have it stained and painted so it was all brown. The... Um, big thing here uh, to keep in mind is that when you use different types of wood they stain differently so when you are staining them I should have just painted them brown 
you know, it was close enough, but they are stained and balsa wood stains differently than base wood. Base wood is much denser and it doesn't absorb the stain as much. So this is a one thirty second inch um, pieces of balsa that I use. No, it's balsa? I think it's balsa. Balsa wood as the, um, the sort of uh, I can't think of what you call it right now. The the underboard, I guess, or whatever, is uh, where the shingles are going to go on. But the problem with this is that when you glue it down, hot glue, tacky glue, whatever, they curl up because of the paint that I did and put on it. So even though it's brown on both sides, um, it was still curling. So I ended up getting this tape, painter's tape, and then taping it down to the table and letting it dry overnight. And that, you know, not tight, just enough to keep it from curling, and it worked. It did not curl so the the wood the the material that i used for the roofs um i used this really thin like like three you know it, it's it's not even a sixteenth of an inch and I, I glued two of them together and the problem is, is that it's like really thin cardboard um and the problem is that they even after a week of them you know being dried flat they would still curl from the moisture in the air. That was, I don't like cardboard because of that. But I, um, you know, I had to do with what I do because I'd already made it. So in this case, I just put up some foam supports. So then that way, when the weight of the shingles was put on there, it, it, it wasn't going to cave anything in. And it worked. It, it, they didn't actually cave in at all. Uh, mm -mm, as of yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here was my idea to paint the edges of the porch foam black. So this way it would kind of, you know, um, I can separate them a little bit and it would look a little bit more hollow like it is in the game as opposed to being sort of solid. Um, then I realized that a lot of the porch that walks around had a wooden framework uh, through like 80% of it. So I just decided to go ahead and put this little, these little thin strips of balsa that, you know, one thirty second inch balsa around it. Now, the reason that I'm using painter's tape is because this balsa will curl and bend and pop off even if it was flat. I don't know why it does it. It just doesn't. So I ended up having to tape everything down like that. So, um, so it would stay. Um, the same strips, same size as the, the siding is what I'm using for the, um, porch itself. Now see how I had to piece all these different pieces together for the shape of the porch. It's just, um, it was kind of a waste of time. But once I got everything glued down, you know, this is, this is the same kind of stuff I do all the time. So, you know, this is, there's no point in showing all of this, but, um, what I'm doing right here is I'm just kind of trimming it down for the extras because technically as far as the game is concerned if I were going to build the model you know the building next to it it would literally go right up against that um the deck so I have stained this I I had I don't know if it was because I was doing it too late at night I don't know what it was but I I could not yet again match somewhat to the stain it kept turning into a dark cedar or something and uh, you know like it, it ended up with almost a sort of a cherry finish here and um it is not it doesn't it doesn't look like you know it might be for a piece of furniture but not for a deck you know that's in a muddy town that's been walked on so i ended up having to go back and paint that with paint to kind of make it look grayish and into the color i really wanted it to finally look like um, it took a while, uh, and even here, when you're seeing this, I, I still go through like maybe two or three different pieces or whatever, or two or three different kind of coats of paint and and washes just to try to get it to, you know, look a little bit more accurate to the game, um, which is very hard to do, by the way, <laughs> um, because the lighting in the Red Dead is so great, you have to you have to m uh, mess with it quite a bit. So anyway, this is just hot glue for these uh these little bitty um stair supports you know uh, there's only two different types of stair supports that i used um 
one that's just like the the normal size that I made to match the um, the you know the the three sixteen inch um, siding board. As I say, I'm using that for pretty much every size. Um, yeah, the compressor finally went off good. But okay, so here it is. Now I know that you're gonna you know the first thing you're gonna see is um, hey those stairs don't touch the ground and oh hey. Why are you painting them when they're finally already on the thing? Well, you know, yet another problem as far as me doing stuff in the wrong order. Don't know why I'm doing it in the wrong order, but it is what it is. But the reason that they're not on the ground is because in the game, everything is uneven. And ultimately, this is where it is. You know, I'm not going to end up doing the landscaping for this one, but I'm doing it this way because... You know, if I were to do the landscaping, that's where the stairs would go. Um, and that's even into the dirt a little bit. So I wanted to try to make sure that, you know, in a future project, when I put it down, you know, put it into, you know, put the mud around it and everything like that, it'll, you know, it'll look right. I hope I can get to that one anyway. But so as I say, there, there it is. Um, and once I had the paint that I had painted for the, the, the deck, I, it was pretty easy to go back and do the steps. Um, I think they turned out pretty good for the most part. Um, I think it's pretty, pretty, pretty close to the, the game itself. And then I realized that I, I was so happy. I was almost out of material <laughs> and all the stores were out and there was, I didn't want to order another 50 online. I realized that I had those two stairs in the back that I had not done yet. And that was, that was bothering me. And right here, I think I'm pointing out that there are these little pieces of wood that I guess in the game are holding up those boards. And I had forgotten about them until much later in this, um, when I was almost done. And see, even at this point, I still don't have it done. But, uh, okay, so in this case, um, these are more modern than, you know, some sort of medieval kind of tiles. But the problem is, in the game... Um, they look like modern shingles and in the old west they're not going to be that perfect because they did them by hand and it was in the you know the old west so you know they were going to do the best it was going to be relatively flat but they weren't always going to be the same size they were scraps so um what i did was i used balsa wood and then just um i i had the the two inch wide balsa that I would actually cut small strips out of um, you know, eyeballing it just to kind of give them a little bit different size and different things like that. And then I made them about, I think a half an inch wide and, uh, and then a quarter inch, uh, wide. And then some, this is a varying sizes, so I didn't waste the wood. And then I threw them all in this little, um, bucket, you know, a little pot there. So that way I can have a bit more randomness. This way I wasn't grabbing, um, you know, every, you know, the, the same size or uh, uh, making sure there was not, you know, not a computer pattern going on. See, there's a, a lot of difference in there. And sometimes, I you know, I guess it's to each his own, you know, some people might not like that. Some people um, do it, but I like it because it's different textures and different sizes all throughout the, the, the thing. So it's like, you know, it, it gives the idea that maybe, you know, something happened to the roof and they went back up and fixed it, you know, and they had to, or they had to do a few other things. They had to, you know, so it, you know, you can do a lot with the, the paint too. You can go back and stain it a little different. You can go back and do some things and it kind of adds a bit more realism to it. So there's this thing that I was going to do here, but, um, okay. So obviously I've already stained the, 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 the tiles, which is still premature because I still had the tiles for this, but I had made sure to make more stain than I needed. So I would have enough for this thing. So it at least matched the, the, um, the shingles. <laughs> um, this is just, um, two pieces of inch and a half foam, uh, foam, a uh, foam board, or excuse me, XPS foam and one half inch piece of XPS foam. It's because I had one and a half inch foam, you know, laying around. Um, you can do whatever you want to. Just it needs to be enough to fit the filling. You don't even need the filling. I just wanted it to be a bit more sturdy because it was going to be hot glued to the outside. So that way when I picked it up, it wasn't too flimsy. 
Um, but technically, all you need to do is just put the foam core together and glue a few supports with the roof angle, and you should be good. But in this case, I, as I say, I wanted it to be solid because I didn't, you know, it actually, you know, it, it was really, really secure after I glued it. But I'm not sure if it's because I had it, you know, you know, if I had the foam core, if it was just the filling, who knows, to each his own. But snap of the fingers and all of the, um, all of the wood shingles are up there. I figure there's no point in showing that because, you know, I've, I've been putting wood shingles and wood siding up this whole video. Um, so there's a couple different stains on the, um, on the shingles. There's this sort of, I don't know what the best way of saying it. This is like, um, it's like, um, a, a cedar color that I used. It's, it's almost, um, just a paint and, you know, really thin down paint. Um, that's the base. And then I go back with a darker stain and I go by, you know, then I fill it in and then I add some, you know, spots here and there to make it look, um, like it's been water damaged in certain different, you know, different areas. But ultimately, this is the sort of the base. And if you notice, got, you know, I just popped on the audio, so sorry about that. If you notice, um, I cheated <laughs> on this. The, the, the bottom is flat. It's not all siding. Uh, and that's not the way it is in the game. But at this point, I had six strips of wood left. And nobody had any more in stock. And it was either wait a month to get more strips of wood in. Or just kind of cheat. <laughs> and um, and put it up there. So obviously I cheated. <laughs> so you can tell that I still haven't glued this thing down yet. Uh, it's the last thing I want to do. But here I am finally realizing that I needed to put those... Um, I don't, I don't know what they are, the supports or just, just <laughs> whatever they are, just make them work. I ended up just getting these, look, this bag of like match sticks, I guess, that you can get from Walmart, you know, and, um, it's usually pretty nasty wood. It's, um, I don't recommend them because, you know, they're three or four bucks and most of them are bent and curved and, and sort of almost rotten in some cases. But I had a bunch already in a box, so I figured, you know, why not? I only need a little bit. But they work perfect for this because them being kind of crooked and, you know, anything like that just kind of made them look a bit more rustic. And, you know, voila, there they are. <laughs> and I left it, um, the stain and the, the paint a little darker on the, on the front there because I, I kind of wanted to have that sort of mud wash you know, that fell against it. Look how, see, look how much darker that is. And now it's a little bit more severe in the, in the camera because of the, the lighting, but it, it, it was, it's, it's, it's super dark comparatively speaking. Uh, I was really upset by that. You know, I think that was one of the reasons why I was delaying attaching it because, you know, I, I needed to do, I wanted to try to match it a little bit more because I was really happy with the stain for the, for the, for the siding as it was because you know it it, it uh, especially you know when you're looking at it up close it it really looked um like it was just you know um that distressed wood that you know that you see on barns and stuff it, it really you know it looked good i thought and and i just couldn't match it <laughs> to save my life so i'm not putting this if you notice my table is not level so i wanted to make sure that it was level on the model and it kept moving around a little bit, but, but yeah, I wanted to make sure. And then, um, though I hate hot glue, I have to admit its usefulness. Well, you know, it's, it makes things so much easier sometimes minus the, you know, thousand burns. So I'm trying to figure out what to do, how to make the, um, the, the handle and stuff like that for the doors. And then I decide that I'm going to take hot glue, squish them together with a ruler to make it as flat as I can before it dries, 
and now I have, I'm going to use a, um, there's a truck going by. I'm going to use a, um, you know, hobby knife and I'm going to cut little rectangles out. I just sort of did this by, I'm not going to put this in a template. This is something that, you know, it, you, you can just do with them. Maybe like a jewelry bead if you don't really care that much or, um, you can kind of go medieval and just put one of those little jewelry loops on it. Um, um, in this case, um, you know, this is the age of skeleton keys. So, you know, I wanted to make sure that there was a, a handle sort of attachment, uh, you know, and a handle. So I cut these little pieces out and then I, you know, and I, I couldn't get any closer. So, you know, yeah, no, this is just so small. I just couldn't, <laughs> You know, which is why there's more video of me just like apparently cutting a ruler. So yeah, there we am. I'm a little closer, but the light's kind of blowing it out. So now that I have those little bitty pieces cut out, I have to make a little itty bitty doorknob. And then I also find out that even though I have all these little precision tips, um, unfortunately, um, I cannot make it round. It will not be round. It's always like this sort of teardrop thing. So I shaped them and I shaped them and I shaped them and they still didn't work correctly. So um, I have a whole lot of video of me messing around with these things. I use the tip here to try to melt it down a little bit just so I have it. But the things are so small that they don't do a very good job. So you just got to do the best you can. <laughs> All right, now that I have it, um, you know, kind of glued together the best I can, I just kind of quickly painted them with like a copper uh, paint. I'm actually pretty surprised because the paint stuck to the glue really well. It 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 it, it was really it was really good, and they're only glued by heating up the little. I ended up actually just putting a little piece of glue on the other piece of glue, <laughs> as opposed to doing them separately, and now. I didn't actually have that fog in focus, but you just basically take the tip of the the thing and then and the and the, of the glue gun and and kind of just make sure that the back's melted a little bit and it sticks right on there. Um, and then there's the front one there. They're a little larger, I think, than the scale, and they probably need to be. But you know, I think it worked for the most part. Okay, so I made these signs. They are essentially just um, printouts just on some cardstock and then I glued those to a piece of small balsa wood and then I put a paperback glue on the other side of it just so that way it wouldn't work and then painted it black on the sides and whatnot and then painted these little black strips and hot glued it all together so I have these little signs that are going to hang now this is just a uh, board itself without the uh, I also sealed the front of these signs with um, some Mod Podge just so then that way they wouldn't um, they wouldn't wear out or whatever because they're paper so anyway so essentially this is going to be relatively easy for the most part it's just hot gluing this stuff down And kind of hanging it right about there without burning myself. I've been burning myself a lot here. And then all right, same thing with here. right and then this is actually going to go right like here so I'm just gonna actually put a little strip of hot glue down this whole thing here so then that way I don't have to worry about it so much 
Then it's going to go right about here. And right about there. And then there are the signs to complete.